I'd like to start this video by saying that I exclude myself from uh, being defined anywhere on the political spectrum. I don't understand enough about politics uh, to say where I am on the spectrum. The only reason I'm making this video is because uh, there's a term that keeps on coming up, a question that keeps on coming up in the media, and I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated hearing it, which is the um, repeated question or statement, is Donald Trump a narcissist? Yeah, he's a narcissist. Well, that doesn't really mean very much. Now, I'm not qualified to diagnose anybody as a narcissist and you can't, or narcissistic personality disorder, and you can't do that remotely. That's not how it works. You have to run people through a series of tests. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offer you information and then you can make your own mind up. Um, narcissist, describing somebody as a narcissist doesn't really mean all that much. Uh, you can say that somebody has pronounced narcissistic traits, and that is very, very different from saying that somebody has narcissistic personality disorder or is a pathological malignant narcissist. In the case of Donald Trump, if we look at the traits that he displays and, and some of his behaviors and beliefs and um, tendencies of doing things, you could say he's a pathological, malignant, psychopathic narcissist. So he's the type of um, cluster B, these are all definitions of personality disorders in the cluster B, and he's a type of cluster B that's actually extremely dangerous because he potentially is also a violent sadist. So one of the things that we need to look for, and one of the questions that we need to ask is, does Donald Trump demonstrate um, that he is in love with an inflated or false image of himself. Does Donald Trump talk about himself or refer to himself in the third person? These, that's an important question to know if he's in love with an inflated self-image of himself. It's like a projection outward. So there isn't really a human being here there's just a series of defense responses. The inner vulnerable, emotional, empathic human being has died away, usually through uh, childhood trauma. And all you're left with is a projection, an idea of a person that that person is in love with. They're narcissistically enamored with their own self-image to their own detriment, to their own self-destruction, and to the destruction of everybody who comes in contact with them. Now, these are important words, self-destruction and destruction to all who come into contact with them. The new term, the new clinical psychiatric term for psychopath is antisocial personality disorder. And in this context, antisocial doesn't mean I'm avoiding social contact. It means any and all social contact with other human beings is an opportunity for me to exploit, to hurt, to dominate and to damage. Why would I do that? Because it makes me, the narcissistic psychopath, feel empowered. So in the core of my being, in the core of the deeply damaged core of my being, I feel very weak, very insecure and very vulnerable. And I loathe those vulnerabilities and those weaknesses. So I shun them. And when I see them in others, I punish them for it. So if you're weak or vulnerable near me, I sneer at you with contempt and this sadistic urge to torture you, to murder you, to punish you for your weakness rises up in me. Why? Because that's me punishing uh, the weakness in myself and hating and negating and suppressing the weakness in myself. Do we see Trump doing this? Do we see him targeting the weak, the people who most need defending? Do we see him targeting people who've been marginalized, ghettoized in society? Do we see him lining them up for future uh, uh, sadistic Machiavellian machinations? Yes, we do. The projected image, Trump. Trump. What does it mean to be Trump? What is Trump? That projected self-image is all this man has. Well, I called him a man. He's not really a man. And I don't mean that in some silly uh, sensationalistic way. I mean there's a machine there, a sucking entity that needs this image of himself to masturbate his own ego over so he feels something. See, the thing is with narcissistic psychopaths, truly malignant, pathological, narcissistic psychopaths, they don't feel very much. They're actually quite numbed out most of the time. So they need a lot of stimulation. And that's why they can end up 
in positions of power because they will behave very bravely. That seems brave, but it's actually just completely reckless. And it's because they don't care about the consequence to other people and they don't really care about the consequence to themselves. Let's come back to this concept of the narcissistic psychopath and self-destruction. As long as I'm remembered as important, it doesn't matter that I'm remembered as being the worst man alive. As long as I am remembered as something, that's the only thing that counts. That's how fragile and broken my ego is. So if I'm remembered as the world's worst, whatever, president, uh, prime minister, leader of a nation, whatever, it's better than not being remembered at all. Because my entire life, I'm feeling I'm stuck between two polarities. One is this sucking vacuum of I don't matter and I'm not anything. And I have to do everything I can to prove that I'm something. And this beautiful tower, this Trump tower self-image in which I have a godlike status in the world and from which I can bully, cajole, manipulate and force people to bend to my will. The uh, narcissistic psychopath doesn't have any moral compunction about lying. They have no problem whatsoever with just lying and they lie neurotically, persistently and consistently. So I would just ask, have you seen Donald Trump lie a lot? Have you seen Donald Trump engage in double talk? Have you seen him say one thing over here to this crowd and a completely different thing over here to this crowd? Why would that happen? Well, if he is indeed, and I'm not qualified to say that he is, a malignant, psychopathic narcissist, a pathological narcissist. He is basically a reaction-seeking, reaction-making machine. So his entire being is just kind of like a, a, a gas cloud of a person who will be whatever you need him to be in the moment so that he can get what he wants from you. And he wants from you. These are not people who are self-sufficient. These are not people who know how to be happy and satisfied on their own. They have to take from others. And you think you know envy? You think you know jealousy? You know nothing. In the world of the narcissist and psychopath, their envy, their sense of jealousy is huge. And when it's exposed, if, ask anybody who's been in a relationship with one, when you see the extent of their jealousy and their envy and their entitlement, that's mine. You should give that to me, even though I've not worked for it, even though I don't understand it, even though you put 20 years in to get it and I did nothing and I just showed up today. I am so godlike and so important that that belongs to me. And the fact you're not giving it to me and begging me to take it is making me furious. This is called narcissistic injury. So I would ask you, when do you see Donald Trump becoming furious, disproportionately enraged, just because somebody said to him, uh, no, Mr. Trump, you can't have that. When a person, look, you don't need to be a psychologist to understand this. Like if a person hears the word no, given to them politely, like, no, that's a boundary and that's not for you. No, you don't deserve that politely and with a smile. And that person becomes enraged. You don't need a psychology degree or a qualification in psychoanalysis to know that that's a sick human being. The things that I always look for most when it comes to uh, truly malignant, predatory personality types is are they entitled and are they exploitative? To what extent do we see that Donald Trump is an exploiter, an exploitative, manipulative, lying snake who will say whatever he needs to say in order to get ahead, in order to generate whatever reaction he needs to generate? And listen. All he's doing right now is tapping into the worst elements of the human psyche, the darkest elements of the human psyche. This is a guy who's got a lot of experience in reality TV, by the way. I'm sure he learned a lot from those nice, uh, gentle, compassionate human beings who run those kinds of shows. I'm sure he sucked in a lot of good information, a lot of good strategies from that crowd. He is tapping into the same elements of the psyche that makes Keeping Up With The Kardashians a hit show. It's the worst of... Uh, human prejudice, of cognitive bias, of logical fallacy, and our inability as en masse to cope with complexity. We want simplicity. And when a nation or a culture is frightened, exhausted, and worn out, as we have seen in history before, they will turn to a larger-than-life B.
big, brave, bold, Trump Tower personality. Follow me. We're going to get rid of these immigrants. We're going to smash the Muslims. We're going to kick the Mexicans out. All of your darkest fears, your darkest drives, your cowardice will be appealed to so that you can get behind him and you can vent this pent up rage that you feel on targets that he is giving you. Whatever you feel when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, that's what they want you to feel. So whatever drug high people are getting uh, endogenously being created by their own bodies, their own brains, their own hormonal system, when they're at a Trump rally, that's what he wants you to feel. He's a puppeteer. So when you feel that righteous indignation, we'll make America great again through violence and aggression and prejudice and racism. We'll make America great again. Whatever rush you get from that, that's what he wants you to feel because he's a master manipulator. In a relationship with a narcissistic psychopath, in the early days, in the courting period, there is something that people who are familiar with the literature know as love bombing. This is when the narcissistic psychopath tells you everything you want to hear. They appeal to uh, your deepest held fantasies, even things you might feel ashamed of. They'll be like, no, don't be ashamed of that. Bring it forward. Break the boundaries. Let's do this. You can do it with me. You need me. If you give me power and control, if you give me what you have, I'll give you this. That's what they do. That's in a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Then what happens is after they've hooked you and they've got you and you've given them your time and your attention and your love, then they can lead you over the precipice. And they will. Because destruction is what makes the narcissistic psychopath feel important. To be the biggest, the baddest and the worst is equal in their minds as being the greatest, as being the kindest, as being the most compassionate. The only thing that counts on planet narcissism, on planet psychopath is how important am I? How important am I? How much do my enemies fear me? How much power do I have? And is there somebody else in the room who I think has more power than me? I gotta destroy them. That's what narcissistic injury and narcissistic rage is. If you have power and I want power, I'm the megalomaniac, there can be only one, I should be in charge, and you have some, that will inflict a narcissistic injury against my hypersensitive ego, and I will punish you for it. I will fly into a narcissistic rage and punish you for it. But I won't just give you a little dig. I might just destroy everything about you. I might just take a shit in your soul so that you can't live life anymore. Because that's the extent of my rage. That's the extent of my hatred. That's the extent of my jealousy. It has no boundaries. This is the problem with all cluster Bs. They don't have any boundaries. And this is another thing I would ask you to look for. Do you see Donald Trump disrespecting social, political, emotional, and interpersonal boundaries regularly? Open your eyes. Listen, I, I thought this was a funny joke too when it all started. And uh, I, I like watching him get up on stage and say silly things. And really, I just thought they were going to ignore him in no time. I think even he, in all of his narcissism and entitlement and lunacy, is surprised at how far he's getting. But be assured of one thing. Be assured of one thing. This man has already self-destructed several times in his life. There's a rule they have in psychoanalysis. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. We do not want Mr. Trump to get into power and have America be one more enterprise that he runs into the ground through his lunacy, his egotism, and his total inability to interact with reality in an adult, sane, and boundaried way. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, some people will be pissed off. <laughs> Vent your fury if you're a Trumpster in the comments. <laughs>